The Boys is a 2019 Amazon Prime original series. In it, a group of vigilantes set out to take down corrupt superheroes who abuse their superpowers. It is based on a comic series created by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. I have never read this series, and for that reason I will not be discussing it during this review. It is currently Amazon Prime's highest rated original series, and initially, I had no intention of watching it. I have been reading comics since I was a young kid, and superheroes are certainly a large part of that. And over the decades, I felt that I had pretty much had my fill of deconstruction of superhero stories, and that I really didn't need another one. I also felt that the final word on deconstruction of superhero stories came and went when DC Comics published The Watchmen during the late 80s. How Wrong I Was The Boys is, in my opinion, the film equivalent today of what The Watchmen was back in the late 80s and early 90s. Now, a little side note. In case you are not familiar, The Watchmen is a graphic novel written by Alan Moore and drawn by Dave Gibbons. In the early 1960s, comic creators like Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Steve Ditko began to create and publish superhero comic books like The Fantastic Four and The Amazing Spider-Man. These books featured much more grounded superhero characters who, while still immersed in the ridiculous tropes of the genre, had much more relatable real-world problems. It was revolutionary for the time. And they were also a hell of a lot of fun. Then in the late 80s, comic writer Alan Moore teamed up with artist Dave Gibbons and took that rather innocent conceit that started with Lee, Ditko, and Kirby, asking what if superheroes really existed in the real world and took it to its logical conclusion with The Watchmen, a meticulously and densely plotted decade-spanning superhero comic story that deconstructed the genre of superheroes in a way that no one had ever done before and probably never will again. Now, in 2009, the Watchmen graphic novel was adapted into a motion picture by director Zack Snyder. And leading up to its release, I remember thinking, how would it play to an audience that knows little to nothing about comics? You see, a lot of the Watchmen's resonance, a lot of its pathos, a lot of its irony, comes from being well-versed in the history and the tropes of its genre. Now, don't get me wrong, The Watchmen is very well written, so well written, in fact, that I'm sure that someone who is not familiar with the last 40 years of comic book superhero history could still read it and come away with something worthwhile. But having said all this, I would add that without that history, you are only getting a part of the experience. It's kind of like listening to music in stereo with only one earbud plugged in. And you have to remember that in 2009, when the movie adaptation of The Watchmen was released, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the global phenomenon responsible for the current golden age of superhero movies, was just barely getting started. I kept thinking, how can you deconstruct a genre to an audience, i.e., mainstream movie audiences of 2009 that has no past history with what you're deconstructing? The short answer is you can't. And that's why I think that Snyder's adaptation of The Watchmen was doomed right from the very beginning. But now, 10 years later, after 20-something MCU movies, numerous film adaptations from Warner DC, and licensed Marvel character adaptations from Sony and 20th Century Fox, not to mention CW's own TV version of the DC Universe? The answer is finally, yes, you can now deconstruct the superhero genre. Not the comic book superhero genre that the Watchmen took on during the late 80s, but the cinematic superhero genre that is now mainstream. The Boys is quite frankly the right film, or I guess I should say right TV show, at the right time. It is a fan of and respects the last 10 years of superhero cinema and television, and for that reason, it knows how to deconstruct it. So now that I've made this comparison between these two separate works told in two different forms of media, I think it's time to talk about how different they are from each other. Warning, at this point, I will be moving into minor spoiler territory. In The Watchmen, 
our focus is on the superheroes, or perhaps I should really refer to them as costume crime fighters since, with the exception of one character, none of them have any superpowers. In The Boys, the focus is on the non-powered human vigilantes who see behind the corporate lies being told to them about their superheroes, who really do have superpowers. In the same way that comic book superheroes are huge corporate properties with enormous profit potential in our real world, the real-life superheroes in The Boys are huge living corporate properties whose images and brands are carefully guided and protected. The public believes that superheroes are born, but the truth is that they are being chemically created and groomed by a corporate entity that is using them to gain power. In The Boys, we learn that the superheroes are not so much antagonists as they are pawns of the Vought Corporation, but this does not make the superheroes innocent. This show's version of Superman, Homelander, is the best example of this. He is a sociopath who I guess would have destroyed most of humanity by now if it wasn't for how much he seems to love the adulation and fame that being the world's greatest superhero gives him. His sexual desires also hold him in check as well, until we get to the season finale, of course. One similarity that both works have in common is the point of view superhero character that we, the audience, are supposed to identify with. In The Watchmen, it's Night Owl, one of the few masked crime fighters in The Watchmen who's not mentally effed up and who really does believe in trying to do good. In The Boys, it's Annie, aka Starlight, a young and earnest woman who really does believe in everything that superheroes are supposed to stand for. The Boys is nowhere near as dense or as meticulously plotted as The Watchmen, but it doesn't need to be, and it hits all the right beats where it needs to. The Boys, while dark, is not as broodingly grim as The Watchmen either. The Boys employs a fair amount of sardonic, if not grim, humor, and definitely dips into satire when it needs to, whereas The Watchmen is almost completely deadpan. But just like The Watchmen published some 20 years ago, the Boys features complex characters that cannot be described in easy terms. Our protagonists do ruthless and horrible things in order to save the world from unwittingly handing over too much power to superheroes and the corporation that owns them. And our superheroes get away with doing horrible things, and it's all covered up by the corporation that owns them and that has a vested interest in maintaining them as brands. But like The Watchmen, the character writing on this series is done well enough that you shockingly find yourself at times even feeling some level of sympathy for them. Unfortunately, though, one other area where The Boys also differs from The Watchmen is also one of its failings. And this failing is inherent in the nature of the media it's presented it in. When you reach the last page of The Watchmen graphic novel, it ends. It ends with no intention of any kind of sequel. Nothing would have made me happier than to see The Boys take a similar path, but... The Boys is an online streaming TV series, so it has to tease a second season. Still, I have to admit that it does end with one of the better end-of-season teasers that I've seen. So far, I have tried to stay away from any major spoilers, but I'm about to go into that territory, so if you have not seen The Boys yet, you might want to stop here. Having Billy Butcher, one of the show's primary protagonists, find out that his wife never died, that she never committed suicide, and that Homelander had nothing to do with her disappearance, was definitely a season two teaser. No getting around it. But at the same time, having our protagonist, a man dedicated to exposing a cover-up, discover that his whole motivation for being what he is is also a cover-up, carries with it such a nice level of irony that it almost kind of works for me as an ending, even if it is ambiguous. It's a question mark for sure, but it's the kind of ambiguous question mark ending I could live with if Amazon decided not to do a second season. Of course, a second season has already been greenlighted, and I will definitely be watching. Whatever happens, I hope that Amazon and its creators will know when it's time to pull the plug and give the story a proper conclusion. Only time will tell. This is TJR. Have you watched this series? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm really anxious to hear what you have to say. 
As always, if you like what I do, please click like, click subscribe, and be sure to click the bell notifications icon so you can know when I release new videos. I want to thank everybody for watching. I also want to give a special shout out to my patrons who are helping me to make videos like this possible. If you'd like to become a patron, please follow the link under more information or floating overhead very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.